the uh, public higher education empowerment and innovation act came to be voted i rose up and started to speak against it and i mentioned neoliberalism and i was immediately cut off by the president of the senate saying that that was not relevant to what we were discussing the argument that i'm going to present to you today is that it is incredibly relevant it's central what we're fighting for is not only to defend funding for public education, but for what the nature of public education is going to be in the future years. And what is threatening that is neoliberalism. Apparently, the president of the Senate had not read the report by the World Bank called Financing and Managerial and Management of Higher Education, a status report on worldwide reforms, which says, quote, Underlying the market orientation of tertiary education is the ascendance almost worldwide of market capitalism and the principles of neoliberal economics. So what I want to do today is, if, this, if I'm stuck, raise seven questions. I can't move. There we go. There we go. What is neoliberalism? Why did it arise and gain so much influence? How has it restructured society? What are the stages of its implementation? What does neoliberalism mean for public higher education? What does neoliberalism mean for research public universities like SUNY Albany? And perhaps the most important question, <coughs> what can we do? I don't have the answers to these questions, but I want to contribute elements for the debate. I'm going to go a bit quicker than I would want, but uh, I hope you understand. What is neoliberalism? Well, when we talk about neoliberal, neoliberalism, we're not talking about political neoliberalism, we're, uh, liberalism. We're talking about economic liberalism. And it's a, the, a project, a historical project, to extend economic rationality to all spheres of society. It really is this idea of applying the principles of laissez-faire to the entire social realm. It's built on a series of very circular ideological principles. Society doesn't exist, but exists are rational individuals. They maximize self-interest. This personal freedom leads to economic efficiency. Economic efficiency requires <coughs> unregulated markets, and unregulated markets produce economic efficiency. And if we allow for free trade and unregulated markets, everybody will benefit. And economic decisions are uh, technical in character and should not be interfered with politics. Why did this set of ideas gain so much influence, arise and gain so much influence, particularly in the 1970s? The main reason is that they offered a way out of the crisis that existed then. It offered a, 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 an analysis of what was at the root of the, the crisis. Uh, rigidities, rigidities such as national borders, labor unions, the welfare state, uh, all these elements that were the results of uh, the, the, the labor capital pact that exist that arose after World War II were seen as impediments for investments flowing to those sectors that uh, were more efficient and therefore they had to be removed. And the World Bank, the IMF, very powerful organizations made this uh, a condition for their loans and transnational capital adopted the neoliberal framework as its program of action. So neoliberalism <coughs> has been operating in our societies for the last 40 years. How does it transform society? Well, it tries to reshape every aspect of society, every realm of society in the image of the market. Societies are made up not of just market relations, but neoliberalism attempts to promote market to all realms of society. How? Well, it promotes uh, basically three elements in its program. Privatization, 
deregulation and liberalization. Promoting these policies, the societies of the third world have been transformed. And as we're seeing by today's march on Brussels and what is happening in the United States, also societies in the advanced capitalist countries are also being transformed. But this transformation takes over many decades. It has different stages. So what are these stages? And this, of course, is a gross generalization. First, you have to destroy the institutions and the institutional arrangements that form part of the welfare state. You have to defund and delegitimize them, force them to compete in the market, and when, when they're weakened, lack legitimacy, they're, they're sold off piecemeal to the private sector. You also have to construct a new mindset, a new subjectivity, a new rationality. And what we see is a transformation of citizens into consumers, or market citizens. And what were before collective democratic spaces, like public universities, are transformed into service providers. And the third moment is you have to erect new institutions that are compatible with this new neoliberal order. And that means creating partnerships between the private, the public, the nonprofit sector, and harnessing them to the logic of corporate capital. This is the process that the world has been undergoing uh, over the last uh, of decades, and it's happening here too. We need to struggle not only for restoring funding for public education. The struggle is about what kind of public education will there exist in the future. So what does neoliberalism mean for public higher education? It means that the whole educational system needs to be transformed and aligned with neoliberal policy. It means radically restructuring every aspect the economics of higher education, the structure of higher education, the uh, mission of higher education, and the identity and motivation of faculty, staff, and students. It's a revolutionary program in that sense. And all of this is done under the new mantra that begins to be installed in these institutions. Revenue generation, economic efficiency, competition. But we think that this might be something I'm making up. This World Bank report says, quote, radical change or restructuring of an institution of higher education means either fewer and or different faculty, professional staff, and support workers. This retraining and reassignment, as in the closure of inefficient or ineffective institutions, the merger of quality institutions that merely lack a critical mass of operations to make them cost effective, and the radical alteration of the mission and production function of an institution, which means radically altering who the faculty are, how they behave, the way they are organized, and the way they work and are compensated. This is the neoliberal program for higher education. 